Alright, Din, you ready to go on an adventure? I am ready. What's your weapon of choice? These two fists. We're uh, we're going to a place called Ta Tala Talat. And um, I asked the guys, just kind of jokingly, like, is it sketchy? Because everyone's super nice and like super friendly in Ireland. And they're like, oh, you want to see something cool? And they showed me a video of this dude getting beat down with a machete on the side of the road. So um, hopefully that won't be us. But uh, I'm glad you're here with me, Ginch. We'll make a great team. And conveniently, right down the road, there's an amazing pump track. I'm not a big pump track guy, but Ginge is a pro downhill mountain biker. And I think he'll probably get on really well with my BMX Turn bike right and the pump track. I have the bike right in the back. Have a good time. All right, so after going to the wrong McDonald's and then going to the right McDonald's, this is what we have secured. It is a D'Angelico. I don't know if that's how you say it, but um, it actually turned out where there was a few issues with it. So one of which being the pickup dropped a little bit. Ginge, how do you think we'll fix that? Just like a, a screw maybe? Just pull it up. It's just springs pushing down the screw there. So we'll just put a, pop another set screw in there. and. She's got a little nick on the back of her, so we were able to negotiate it down, but I think it's like a 800 euro guitar, got a 350, not bad. I just wanted something that uh, I could play that's like an electric guitar, but has a little bit better sound since it's a hollow body, since I probably won't plug it into an amp, and I'll just be like playing in hotel rooms. No LZ guitar reveal, I need to get better first, so <laughs> that'll be off camera. All right, for those of you that don't know, when Ginger and I originally met, we connected through cycling. I was a BMX biker, and you were a downhill mountain biker? Dual solo. It's like basically this. Okay, I was gonna say, I, I didn't even know what that is. Um, but uh, yeah, I, we've come a long way. We've gone through being um, kind of roommates. Were we roommates, kind of, technically? Yeah. From roommates to drifters to global travelers. Back to biking, biking together. Yeah. <laughs> All right, James, let's see a, a pump track speed run. Oh, we'll do a mild run. All right, sounds good. I'll put aggressive metal music on it. Oh no! This is called like Superman or something. The fence just scares me. Nice tuck would be cooler. You got this. Oh god. <laughs> While the boys here are working on the comp car, Sean's back at home getting the giveaway car dialed. If you haven't seen it, the orange S15 that we are giving away is coming out absolutely insane and I'm bummed I'm not there to see the full process. But he's got the engine out of the other car, he's already cleaning it up, putting all the nice bits on. That way when we get back we should be finishing it up. As you guys know, when you buy something and support the channel on LZMFG or DriftHQ.com, every $5 you spend gets you entered for a chance to win. We've got an awesome team back home at LZMFG and DriftHQ fulfilling your guys' orders and they are blasting through them thanks to the sponsor of today's video, ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you already know shipping takes up a lot of time and resources. ShipStation is going to make it a lot easier integrating multiple carriers, streamlining your workflow and integrating wherever your stores are located on the internet so your business can grow even when you're competing in a drift competition in Europe. The automation and click of the button label printing has been amazing but honestly my favorite thing is how much money ShipStation saves. You get discounts up to 89% off UPS, DHL, DHL Express, and USPS rates. And if that's not enough to convince you to give it a try, what if I told you over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation and 98% of those customers that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life, including us at LZMFG and Drift HQ. Work less and ship more with ShipStation, the innovative tool that will help turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Just head over to my link, shipstation.com forward slash AdamLZ and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's just ShipStation.com 
ShipStation.com forward slash Adam LZ. And I wanna give a massive thank you to ShipStation. Not only have they helped our businesses grow, but them sponsoring videos like this one helps us do all the crazy builds and compete all over the world. So thank you and let's get back to it. All right guys, welcome to the video. We are back in Mandela Park. This is my third time here and this is the start of my very first Drift Masters event in my own car. So we got it unloaded getting wiped down, just got all the wheel stickers done, unloading all the spares and doing finishing touches. And we are sharing a garage with none other than Josiah, the FDF man himself. What's up, dude? Hey guys, how you doing? How, uh, how's this thing been in Europe? I know this isn't your first time at Mondello now. Yeah, so the first time we had this car in Mondello, it was incredible. And then we went to Spain with uh, our hearts high, everything was good. We blew the engine in Spain. That's the game we play. Uh, it's definitely not luck. You have to expect to blow these things. So we had a spare. We couldn't swap it in time. So needless to say, this is the new engine. We just were on the dyno yesterday with Lloyd and it was awesome. So the car is ready to go. Sick. I'm really bummed that I didn't get to make it to Spain, but I did hear everyone had bad luck. I don't know what it was. Was that like the Utah of Europe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was excited to run the track because of what this car was capable of. It's basically a speed built drift car. Yeah. And it was the fastest track, probably the fastest average speed of any track ever, I would say. Really? Close to Utah. But man, like the speed in the middle section was insane. I did get three laps in, so I do know what okay. it was like. Okay, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, everyone had horrible luck. Like basically all three Shanahan cars, they were all dealing with crazy stuff and seven engines blown. We couldn't even, we swapped it with a bash bar and ratchet straps and That's like crazy. a bunch of guys in the pits, so. Now I mentioned this before, but if you didn't catch the last video, Drift Games is doing logistics for us, so our cars will be transported together. So I imagine we'll be hanging out a lot throughout the trip. And yeah. uh, it's very convenient since I am running an FDF kit on my car. If I got a question, I'll just come knocking on your door. Hey bud, what's up? So all four cars are on FDF and it's gonna be interesting as Ryusei is on the car for, or on the kit for the first time this round. So I'll probably be helping them, but we're gonna be able to share ratios. I know the cars are a lot different, yeah, but yeah. the wheel speed is the wheel speed, and we're just gonna share numbers and get the best results for all four of us. What's cool is even though, obviously we're sharing because we're like kind of teammates, even outside of that, everyone here is so chill. Like everyone's talking, oh, everyone yes. wants to help each other. Dave equates it to it's like a traveling circus because everyone's kind of out of their element no one's really in their home country except for maybe once so um it's really cool there's a lot of camaraderie and i'm excited to see what this year takes us yeah what you can be certain of is that everyone had to go through the ringer to get here so once you see 40 drivers together we're all the same yeah, like, yeah. we all you don't even have to say oh i had a bad or you should feel bad for me about this it's like no we've all had stuff so yeah no one no one can about jet lag either because exactly. everyone's flying oh yeah we're yeah. all we're all in it so sick yeah. all right it's gonna be a great weekend hell yeah we need we need to make a whole compilation of people's reactions to johan's beautiful downpipe look at that john dude. this is incredible the colors everything nice job man you know what i'll honestly say i think you did too good because if i take a quick look at this it almost looks like one of those overseas titanium exhausts that's like robot welded especially with the color and stuff it's a compliment. no it is i know it's the, it's the most backhanded compliment imaginable. <laughs> oh, we got another Vibram Performance Titanium Boy over here. Is yeah. that to quiet it down to make sound reg? Well, we had it here because Dave assured us that we needed it, but then everyone said it's too quiet to take it off. So this Vibram exhaust did an incredible job quieting probably the loudest car on the grid. But we took it off for this round, so. I, li I like the, the split, that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, and then this, we were just like, we have two elbows, what do we do? Cut it in the weirdest way possible on the bandsaw and try to match it. No, that's so. sick. Jak się ma z tym pejują? Zajebiście! I don't know what that means, but it's good to see you. Good. <laughs> Been hanging out with uh, the Sposub team. If you guys don't remember from uh, my last trip when I went to Poland and drove Driftmasters. That was the S15 that I drove. They're out here. So good to see everybody. All right, it's the first day of driving. Just got out of the driver's precinct. 
Just got out of the driver's briefing. Jason is here from Link ECU. He's very busy right now. He's on the phone doing a bunch of wizardry things. He's been helping us get the PDM dialed and I'm gonna put footage in here of us retuning on the dyno. Uh, the car actually did pick up. We didn't have a baseline to compare it to because the dynos were different, but it wanted 5% more fuel in the mid range, which roughly equates to about 50 horsepower. So it's kind of like we added a 50 shot of nitrous by switching back to the stock intake manifold, which is gonna be really killer here in the rain. I'm about to get in the car, get strapped in and uh, go out for a patchy practice here in Mandela. Yo, brand new car, haven't driven it in months, so to be able to go out there and feel as comfortable as I did, amazing. I would say the only critique that I had would probably be that the front uh, just was a little bit twitchy, which is just a product of some uh, differences. I'd say the biggest thing being that this car, we're running different tires, and we also have two-way shocks instead of single ways, so we have a lot more range of adjustments. So even though all the other stuff is the same, it's just something we'll need to dial in, but yo, the tiny turbo with the stock intake manifold, the response is so good in the rain, amazing. So very, very pumped. First lap, it felt great. Chase felt great as well. Plenty of car to catch up. I'd say the biggest thing to just kind of dial in. Um, I'm gonna actually pull some rebound out of the car so that way the wheel can drop and the anti squat can activate sooner. Just going into zones, um, I would feel like I can't really get on the gas that much or the car would wash out. So, what you want to be able to do is have more grip on that instantaneous first instance of throttle. That way, when I'm chasing someone, I can start closing the gap sooner. Where uh, I don't know if you could tell on that lap, I was starting to close the gap later in each corner, which is good, but it's it's not how you do a winning chase. Brand new car, I think that's the first time I've ever chased in it. Not a bad chase. Uh, belt is kneeling and no clutch. Gotcha. 
All right, first little stint of practice laps. I'd say overall everything went really good for a brand new build. Um, on that last lap though, we did uh, wind up losing clutch pressure, so the clutch fell to the floor. And a little bit of a belt squealing issue. I didn't lose power steering or anything, but I could hear it and smell it smoking. Uh, so the guys are gonna take a look at that, and we'll be back out for more laps of practice. But um, yeah, think weapon. How you boys doing? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad? Everyone, this is Lee. He's helping us out this weekend. Appreciate you uh, coming and giving us a hand. So what they're doing is basically giving us some more clearance because we've had issues in the past when things get hot. These uh, floaters can get stuck and cause some more problems. So you figure out what uh, was going on? Yeah, so what I think happened was this is our normal slay cylinder looks. This is shims to place out for the air gap so that you have the proper clearance from the fingers on the clutch to the slave cylinder. So this sleeve here is what holds the throw up bearing. And this is might slide down too far below this face. And therefore all the shims and the clutch slave or the throw up bearing came off. And then when this came back into play, when you press the clutch, it caught on it, and then it put so much pressure on the fingers, the clutch, and then that's when you lost uh, pressure. Because then, when you did that, it kind of like moved this out of whack, and it messed up the seal inside. So and what's the what's the solution now? So we put a new one in. I'll check air gap again, make sure that's square. You could probably hardly, you know, you could tell which bushing, I mean, chains we have. So. I to have a ballpark figure, put it in, check air gap, put everything back in place. I think what happened was the bearing was too loose on this piece, and so it came off. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an indentation on the sleeve so that it won't allow that to happen. Uh, we'll figure something else for that uh, later. But I think for now, this will help with this. And we are lucky enough that Driftmaster is going to let us do one practice lap. They basically split practice into two different run groups. So I'm going to get to do one practice lap in the next run group just so we can verify everything's good. Otherwise, we'd be probably looking at maybe only a total of like four or five laps before qualifying. So um, stoked about that. And uh, yeah, stoked to get back out there. Now, I told you guys that Sean was at home working on the giveaway S15, but one thing I left out was that he's also working on the blue E36. Now, I know I said that I wasn't going to E-Town, and while that was true, that is one of my favorite tracks, and I won my first ever round of FD last year there, so I've been trying to figure out any way possible to go. One of the challenges is that Owen and Johan both aren't able to go because of how tight it is to this trip, but we have made the impossible possible. We've rounded up a crew that's gonna help support me up there at E-Town, including Sean, who is working for Lee on his prospect team, but is also going to be helping when he can, along with Lee. And a massive thank you to Breezy. I'm actually gonna be wrapping the roof of the blue E36 with a pretty cool Breezy livery. We're gonna be doing some fun stuff around the event. If you haven't seen me talk about it in the other videos, Breezy's pretty rad new drink, 8% alcohol, 40% juice. I'm gonna put a store locator in the description if you wanna go grab a pack and try it for yourself but i'm super stoked to be there i saw so many comments from you guys wanting me to go and i will say that really pushed me to uh, try to figure out whatever way i can make it happen possible so i'm excited to go it's going to be back to back weekend coming from ireland into e-town but i'm ready for it we're gonna have a good time so i'll see you there the northeast support is always insane i appreciate you guys no dice on the uh, last practice lap we're running some weird electrical gremlins that are uh, affecting what seems to be the alternator and the water pump so Hopefully we'll be able to get figured out. Jason from Link is pretty good with the PDM stuff. That is a big variable just compared to the other car. As always, uh, with newness, there's a lot of variables. The good thing is the laps that I did do, the car feels right at home. So I feel pretty good going into tomorrow, which will be qualifying and then the next day, which will be competition. Um, three laps, but still not terrible and not likely to rain it again in Ireland is very high. I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here and I'll trail into qualifying and competition in the next one. Uh, Ginger's running into town to get some burgers. We're gonna get everything dialed in on the car, go through absolutely everything that we can. Fresh build, not uncommon to have some woes. I'm just happy the car feels amazing. So once we get the little bugs worked out, we'll be sitting real good. The car looks cool and uh, I'm so happy to be here. So hope you guys are enjoying the videos from out here and I'm looking forward to an entire season out here in Europe. And I'll be seeing a lot of you guys at E-Town next weekend, which I am beyond stoked for. So, them with good vibes and uh, appreciate you guys for watching this video. When you say